So something we get asked about all the time, what are the cervical spine red flags all about? What are the five Ds? What are the three Ns? What is vertebrobacillar insufficiency? Are you ready to find out? Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Let's dive into our anatomy model so we can show you what this is all about. So first of all, we need to dive into the blood supply around the neck and the brain and no better place to start than with our anatomy model. So let's flip this model to the back and we can show you some of the major arteries around the cervical spine. So the first ones to show you is the carotid arteries. So we have the common carotid artery, which arises from the thorax and then splits into the internal and external carotid arteries. Now, as the name highlights, the external carotid artery effectively supplies all of the external structures to the brain. So it supplies things like the facial muscles, the head muscles and the neck muscles. On the other hand, the internal carotid artery supplies a lot of the internal structures and therefore we can see here how it directly supplies into the brain and particularly the circle of Willis which is the circulatory system of arteries around the brain. So clearly it's really really important to look out for problems within this kind of artery when it comes to the cervical spine. Now going back to the neck there are two other major arteries I'd like to mention. The first of which is the deep cervical artery and we can see that this sits in the posterior region of the cervical spine and its main role is to supply a lot of the muscles in that posterior region of the neck. But then the other final artery that I'd really like to show you is the vertebral artery. And this artery is really, really interesting. It actually comes up literally through the cervical spine, which is why it is the vertebral artery. And we can see here how it runs in a particular opening or a foramen or a gap in the transverse processes of the cervical spine vertebra. And that opening is called the transverse foramen, the foramen within the transverse process. So then, like the internal carotid artery, the vertebral artery then supplies directly into the brain, into the circle of Willis. And in fact, it joins into the bacilla artery, which is one of the main components of the circle of Willis. And that's why we get the phrase vertebro bacilla insufficiency. The vertebral artery moves into the bacilla artery. So when you have insufficiency in that system, you have vertebro bacilla insufficiency. So hopefully you can see here that the internal carotid artery and the vertebral artery directly supply into the brain and they run clearly through the cervical spine. And so it's really, really important that we are looking out for signs of pathology to those two particular arteries to look for that red flag pathology. So that's the anatomy. What's the deal with all of that clinically? Well, thanks to the brilliant work of Kerry and Taylor in 2010, we now know that pain around the neck can manifest itself as if it was normal mechanical neck pain caused by muscle pain or pain from the joints, when actually that pain is being caused by an issue with one of those vascular structures, the internal carotid artery or the vertebral artery. And so, therefore, we really need to be on the lookout as physiotherapists for red flag pathology to one of those vessels. So, for example, if there was a clot, a DVT, or a buildup of fatty plaque, atherosclerosis, within one of those arteries, it could present like normal neck pain. Whereas actually, worsening of those symptoms could cause a real issue within the brain, such as a stroke. So that is the red flag pathology that we really need to be aware of. So clearly, as physiotherapists, it's really important for us to look out for early signs of that red flag pathology. And in the past, we would have looked at the five Ds and the three Ns, as you can see on your screen now, as potential signs and symptoms of that red flag pathology. The problem that we have now found is that the five Ds and the three Ns are effectively signs of 
too late pathology. By the time someone has problems with their speaking and their swallowing or they're falling to the floor or they have widespread nausea, it could demonstrate that they already have a complicated neurological problem that could be part of a stroke, for example. Therefore, we needed to find something earlier in our patient's pathology that could alert us to these problems. And again, thanks to the brilliant work of Kerry and Taylor, we now have more of an idea of what some of those early signs or risk factors might be. For example, does your patient have high blood pressure? Do they have an extensive cardiovascular history? Do they have a history of DVTs? Do they have diabetes, which is uncontrolled? Are they really obese? Are they a long-term smoker? And do they have neck pain amongst all of these different things? These are much more likely to be able to lead us to the potential discovery of that red flag early. And that's the crucial word, early, compared to the five Ds and the three Ns, which are unfortunately a later sign. So guys, these are some of the key things to be looking out for with your patients. And if you want more detail, we've got a brilliant webinar, Cervical Spine Red Flags, link in the description below, which highlight all of the major things that you need to be looking out for. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, check us out on Instagram, at Clinical Physio, and on our website, clinicalphysio.com, where we've got loads of brilliant resources for physiotherapists. My name's Khalid, see you really soon here on Clinical Physio.